Welcome to Unit Circle Survival Guide. Here we're going to find the exact value of the sine of 19 pi over 6 using the SARC method. So here's our outline. SARC's just an acronym to help you keep all your steps organized and in order. So S stands for sketch the angle's terminal side. A reminds us to think ASTC, and that will help us determine which trig functions are positive in each quadrant, and thus what the sign of our final answer should be. R stands for reference triangle, so we'll find a reference angle and then a special right triangle and coordinates to go with it. And then C, we'll calculate our trig ratio. If you need help with any of these particular steps, I'll post a link that has a playlist with videos on how to do all of these, um, and they'll go pretty in depth. Um, so look below if you need that. All right, so let's find the sine of 19 pi over six. So first we're going to sketch the angle's terminal side. And let's notice that our angle is actually more than one rotation uh, on the unit circle. It's 19 pi over six, and we know that two pi is a full rotation in radians, or that'd be 12 pi over six. So we know we've rotated more than two pi around. And so it'll help us to find a coterminal angle to 19 pi over six. That way we can easily sketch the terminal side. So all you have to do to find that coterminal angle is subtract two pi from 19 pi over six. And make sure you write two pi with the common denominator of six, so that'd be 12 pi over six. And so we find that seven pi over six is coterminal to 19 pi over six. And all that means is they share the same terminal side and we just rotate differently to get to each one. So we can go ahead and sketch our terminal side now. We know we're rotating in the counterclockwise direction because our angle is positive. So here we have zero, halfway around is pi, or you could think of that as six pi over six if that's helpful. And then you'll know that seven pi over six must be just past that. The terminal side is in the third quadrant here. Okay, great. So now we have our angle's terminal side sketched. We're ready for step two. Think ASTC or all students take classes. And that will help you working from quadrant one around in a counterclockwise direction to know which trig functions are positive in each quadrant. So they're all positive in quadrant one. Sine and its reciprocal cosecant are the only ones positive in two. Tangent and its reciprocal cotangent are the only ones positive in three. And cosine and secant are positive in quadrant four. So let's get back to quadrant three because of course that's where we're concerned. We know that tangent and cotangent are the only exact values that'll be positive in quadrant three. So the sine of 19 pi over six must be negative. So let's go ahead and make a note of that. And we'll go ahead and put the negative sign for our final answer as well. All right, so now we're ready for step three. We will find the reference angle, which is simply the amount of rotation between your angle's terminal side and the x-axis. Okay, so we went to six pi over six or pi and then to seven pi over six. So that reference angle must be one pi over six. And pi over six is the same as 30 degrees. So we know we should be working with our 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, that's a special right triangle and you can use the your knowledge of a special right triangle to know the coordinates of that special right triangle. And we're putting it here in the first quadrant because we already considered um, that our answer will be negative in the previous step. And so we don't need to worry about any negative signs for our calculations. We've already taken care of that. All right, so we know that the longer leg is horizontal here. So the X coordinate must be root three over two. And the Y coordinate must be one half. And now that we've done all this preliminary work, we're ready to calculate our trig ratio. We know on the unit circle, the sine of an angle is simply going to be its Y coordinate. So we can look at the Y coordinate from our first quadrant triangle. We know from step two, our answer is going to be negative and we don't really have to calculate anything here. We know that the sine of 19 pi over six is going to be negative one half. So that is finding the exact value of the sine of 19 pi over six using the Sark method. I'll post a link to more worked examples in the video description, so be sure to check that out as well. And thank you for watching.